Welcome back to Champion News Talk Radio, brought to you by championnews.net. This is Carol Parisi. Today, our founder, Jack Roser, and myself have Monsignor Ketchum with us. And during the break, we were talking about freedom of religion, freedom from religion, and symbols. Monsignor, let, let's talk a little bit about this, this law and how it's impacting not only the Catholics, but evangelical Christians and, and people of life all over. Father, uh, didn't they uh, at the university uh, decide to chase uh, a priest out of uh, a uh, class that was uh, being presented in the university? This is what you're talking about, I think. Yeah, we, we had a situation at the University of Illinois in which uh, a professor in the religious studies department that we actually had an arrangement with the university at that time, we provided uh, this particular uh, individual to teach those classes on Catholicism um, was in a situation in which he was um, uh, challenged and uh, basically um, there were some things that took place by which he's no longer uh, employed at the University of Illinois at this time. Um, so it was unfortunate and it was certainly um, by the beliefs of many a situation by which um, his religious liberties were violated. Well, uh, religious liberties, uh, is this to say uh, that uh, no Christian religion or any religion at all can be taught in the university, uh, its history and so forth in the university? Uh, that's a, a crazy restriction. Um, why should uh, religion of any sort be driven out of the public place? Uh, I mean, the University of Illinois is a public university supported with public taxes and religion of various kinds is uh, uh, everywhere uh, in the state of Illinois. And uh, why should uh, that be a subject that you can't teach in a, in a university uh, with public funds? Uh, uh, somebody may say, well, you have Catholic, uh, we want to have uh, Lutheran or Muhammad or anything like that. Well, uh, possibly so, uh, but why, why rule it all out? and start with the Catholic religion and, uh, and say you can't do that. Because uh, uh, you can't bring up a, a, a person as just a libertarian. I mean, I've done the libertarian thing all the way back to Ayn Rand. I've been a member of the Objectivist Society and all that. But uh, that's uh, fine, the market's a very good thing. But uh, there's a market for morality too. And mm -hmm. it happens that uh, she was an atheist and uh, that's had its poisonous effect on uh, a lot of the way uh, commerce is carried on. Uh, you can't uh, possibly even have a good libertarian type of, uh, of society unless it's superimposed on a society that keeps contracts, that has a certain kind of morality. And in the natural law that's come down in the, our, our bodies as they've changed into what they are, over 10 million years, uh, and the natural law came down uh, the way people treat each other, and, f and that's largely in families. And religion has worked out uh, the, the code of living, uh, of what amounts to good morality, treat each other properly. Uh, they need to be taught that as much as they need to be taught calculus. Well, now that's, that's interesting that you say that, because did they, if, if, were there any Buddhist classes at um, the school, at the campus, the teaching religion, of Buddha? In the religious studies department, there, there are a multiple uh, different diversity of religions that are taught, yeah. And did any of the other teachers have problems teaching the classes on Buddha or Islam or Judaism, any of those religions? I'm not aware of any, huh? So it was just, just the Catholics? Yes, in this particular issue. Um, I think it's my understanding that universities wish for religions to be taught in an academic uh, type of perspective uh, rather than being taught with conviction. Uh, but yet, I think it's our young people <laughs> who are demanding uh, that they be taught something that is worth being convicted about. And uh, I think, in, again, I think that's the, the value of, of campus ministry is to be able to be there for students who are encountering religion from a merely kind of stale academic perspective and say, no, you need to embrace this with conviction. Well, you can't, you can't look at the culture and what society has been doing 
over the last 20 years and not realize that there is a concerted effort to come against Judeo-Christian values in America. I mean, you've got public schools that are, uh, the chorus group is, is singing Allah is great in Arabic. That's okay. Now, if, if you look at the liberal media and what they stand for, they're for women's rights, yet they group on the side of the Muslims. Why? These, these two are so tolerance. opposed. It's they're so opposed Michael. to each other. But the reason that they've become allies is because both are against Christianity. Well, you know, I find, it, I find the hypocrisy to be so profound because it's tolerance. We have to let the Muslims speak Allah. But when it comes to a Christian speaking, just say, saying Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, there's a real problem with that. So those that preach all this tolerance are intolerant mm -hmm. to the Christian convictions and the Ten Commandments. Now, let me ask you something as a Monsignor. Jack was saying all of, all of the family and everything. This, this has been going on for thousands of years, tens of thousands of years. People in their heart know that there is a higher power, a supreme being and infinite intelligence. It's been proven. It's been proven. Now, let my, my question is to you, all these other religions, don't they basically, and not to, not to make things crazy, but don't they all basically teach the same thing, is to love each other, love God first, love each other, and why do they pick on the Catholics? I know I keep kind of... It's because the it. Catholic religion has been very successful, uh, you know, for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, uh, the Catholic Church carried uh, the scripture uh, back through centuries uh, when the average person did not read uh, in, until Gutenberg came along. Uh, you know, the, the uh, books were written by what the Russians called Samadzat, uh, the, the great classics that came out of Russia while the communists were there were written by hand, duplicated mm -hmm. by hand mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they wouldn't allow printing. Well, that's the way it was through the world for thousands of years until Gutenberg came along with movable type and uh, they could actually print Bibles that people could have a chance to read. But the church preserved that. Uh, the Jewish faith uh, preserved uh, the Old Testament down to uh, what's called every jot and tittle. Uh, they copied it so carefully. Uh, the jot and tittle are the two smallest uh, letters in the Hebrew alphabet. and uh, so that's a symbol of the detail that their scholars did in bringing uh, their religion, uh, which uh, has uh, uh, many attachments to the, to, uh, the same uh, uh, thing as, as uh, Christian religion. Uh, they're companion religions, but they preserved a lot of that, uh, the Old Testament. So, uh, listen, you've, you've, got to you've got to respect uh, the organization of people. And down through the ages, the family has been the organization. Mm -hmm. That this Obama comes along and thinks he can be your daddy, that he can be your family, and uh, do all of that stuff and take care of, of uh, all of the things that you want to do. Um, that's crazy because now the government's doing it and that's going to get in the courts and somebody's going to get hurt. It's you goofy. see, that's, that's exactly right, Jack. That comes back to the cultural war. We've got two institutions that have been under attack for years, the family and the church. Why? Because the family and the church breed independence. The family and the church breed looking out for one another, mm -hmm. which means the government can't step in and get you to become dependent upon itself. It also, it also is, is teaching, uh, we call it faith, but it's, a, it's the ideas of the relationship of, uh, of people with each other. Uh, we have to have that kind of an organization, uh, and that is what's come down. Uh, that's the details of it. Uh, the Islam thing tried to do that in Sharia law, mm -hmm. but the trouble is it's on a bad base. Uh, Muhammad uh, came along 16, 600 years after Christ. Uh, he was not a peaceful man. Uh, he was a warrior, and he founded his, his religion on war. And uh, there's only three conditions a Mohammedan religion, you're going to be, uh, be an Islam, or you're not going to be, or you're going to be Dimini is in between. And those other two are in their religion temporary. Uh, you're going to be an Islam, or your head's going to get cut off. Basically, that's what they've got, and that's a bad uh, foundation to build on, and 
we have a lot of uh, turmoil in the, going on in the world because there's an awful lot of people that uh, think that they're going to have 70 virgins. Uh, I got a news wow. for them. They're going to be nuns. <laughs> with, 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 with shotguns, you know, uh, Hagar was told when she was when he was banished into the desert with Ishmael that your sons will be fighters. I want to talk about the young people though when we sure. come back.